your dreams are never too big. It doesn't matter what kind of start you've had. It doesn't matter your background. Your dreams are never too big. If you want to go and set up the next Amazon, go and do it. And you know what? Starting a big company and starting a small company, it's the same amount of work. Hey, my lovelies. Welcome to the Joe Yoga Life Diaries podcast. Here we discuss all things yoga, meditation, parenting, women's stuff, and generally supporting and encouraging each other as fellow goddesses through this crazy life. You can expect meditations, discussions, and always some pearls of wisdom. I'm Jo, a yoga teacher, children's yoga teacher, and the founder of the It's All Yoga online studio. Enjoy the show. Okay, welcome everybody to the Joe Yoga Life Diaries. Uh, this week it's really exciting because we've got Hannah Hodson here from Toby Gifts. I knew I wanted to have her on the show because she is a mom. I really resonated with her story and she's going to tell you lots about that in a moment, but she's a mom who just saw where there was a need and how she could help and has totally branched out in that way. And I'm just going to give you a little bit more of an intro to her. And she, Toby Gifts was established with a triple bottom line course set of principles. And I absolutely love this, where planet and people come just as important, if not more so than the profit. I absolutely love that ethos. They're not just about making a profit at the expense of people on the planet. On the contrary, they consider all three of equal importance and fundamentally interconnected. And she's a mama, she's an entrepreneur, and she's just fabulous. So Hannah, welcome, welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. Honestly, it means the world. Um, it's so important at this stage to get our name out there, bring awareness to what we're trying to do and educate people on what's going on in Sri Lanka at the moment. I mean, I'm not sure if you've seen it on the news, but they really are having the toughest times. And so our aim is to be able to take you know, some of the profit that we make here, be able to pump it back into Sri Lanka, be able to, you know, provide employment opportunities and to be able to help the planet. So yeah, getting awareness out there is everything. And that's why this is so important. So thank you, Jo. I really, really appreciate it. You're so um, welcome. I did see something on the news actually, and we're going to go into that a little bit later, because I think it's really wonderful that when women come together and see a cause that they can make such a difference and so but what I want to start with today is just tell us a little bit about you why you decided to well tell us about you tell us your why why you started <laughs> so my main reason I've always wanted to work for myself I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and start a business I never really knew how or when it would happen but I always trusted that there would be a sign and I would run with it when it came and so I was made redundant three times during um, the last two years. And these were all what was supposed to be really safe, secure jobs. And I thought everything that was supposed to be secure wasn't. So I might as well just take a huge risk. And I had learned about Sri Lanka and been out there through marketing work that I did for an oil company. And I saw just how much of a beautiful place it was. And I'm not just talking about the beaches and the climate. I'm talking about the people, the culture, you know, the way that they're natured, the resourcefulness. It really struck me. And it's such a stark difference to the UK. Um, and so I thought, you know, what can I do to really help these people? And the biggest thing is providing them with employment because you can, you know, do charities and stuff like that and provide them. But it's like that old saying, you know, teach a man to fish and he will eat for life. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I wanted to do. And it all kind of fed in from that. I kind of looked around and I thought, well, I need something that's naturally abundant because I don't want it to cost the earth. I don't want to start big factories where I'm manufacturing stuff. And that's not the, the kind of route I wanted to go down. So I looked at what was naturally available and what waste products they had out there and started to get some ideas. So that's where coconut bowls came from. So that was the first kind of product that I knew I wanted to do. And yeah, it's just through the fact that they have a natural bowl shape. Sri Lanka is the coconut triangle. So it is 
naturally abundant beyond belief <laughs> and it's very easily handcrafted into something that would sell in a UK market so that's where it started so I started to go to the coconut plantations speak to locals around there and kind of see what we could do about getting some bowls made up so I could bring them home and just see what people thought from the UK if it would work from that first coconut bowl I then sourced rice sacks and lentil sacks onboarded you know about 15 to 20 artesians so our seamstresses that sew them up for us and they can work from home a big thing in Sri Lanka is they don't have that safety net that we do so if you're sick and you have to go off work you get sick pay if you are caring for someone you get carer's allowance um in Sri Lanka they just don't have that so if you have to stay at home and look after young children or you know elderly relatives or you know um people with ill health you can't work and they're relying on you to, to be able to bring the money in and, and, and feed them. So I wanted to do something that women like myself, single mums, could do from home and that would earn them an income. So that's where stitching up the rice sacks into yoga bags and shopping bags kind of came from. And then I went to visit an elephant sanctuary. Elephants are my favourite animals. So I went to visit an elephant sanctuary out there and they were teaching me about the conflict between elephants and farmers in Sri Lanka, the na their natural habitat is diminishing because more and more of the you know, natural um, places they would have lived are becoming farmland. Are elephants wild in Sri Lanka? Yes. Yes, so elephants are wild in Sri Lanka, oh, wow. but they are now, um, because their natural habitats diminish so much, they're wandering onto farmland and thinking the farmers have put free food out for them. So they're eating the crop. Oh. And so the farmers are killing the elephants to protect the crops. Um, also the ivory trade as well. There's many reasons why they do it. So I kind of thought, what can I do that is going to benefit the planet and save the animals? And I thought, we can do something with their poo. <laughs> so we are doing notebooks which have paper made from elephant dung. And so now instead of the farmers chasing the elephants away and killing them, they are collecting up their poo. <laughs> poo. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> so, and then I thought, well, that's great, but we need a notebook cover. So I asked locals, you know, what's the biggest problem with recycling here? And it's mostly biscuit wrappers because they have that really shiny inside and then a printed outer layer mm -hmm. and they can't separate that to be able to recycle it. So we, we, through heat press, melt them down and make the notebook covers out of them. So 30 biscuit wrappers go into every single notebook. That is amazing. And have you got people out there collecting the biscuit wrappers as well and things like that? And yeah, we have. Um, and this is what we really wanted to do is we wanted to be able to touch as many people as possible and impact them positively in a finance. So instead of, you know, going to a recycling plant and just getting them to give us those biscuit wrappers, we have guys that go out on tuk-tuks and go around the villages and collect it up from people. And so we're paying households for their waste we're paying someone to drive around and took to and collect it up. We're paying someone to make it into a notebook. Um, and so we're able to financially benefit so many people by doing this in more of a manual way. Mm -hmm. So it's just the impact that we've been able to have has been incredible. I mean, each coconut bowl that we sell has a direct financial impact for 17 different people over in Sri Lanka. That's amazing. Because I think a lot of the worry is some, we have a good idea. We have an idea, excuse me, and then haven't a clue where to start. And what you're proving, Hannah, is that we don't have to overthink it. It can be, well, do you know what? You actually, yeah, you get somebody on a tuk-tuk to go and pick them up and then you've got it in your hand. Yeah. And then it's, but then it's knowing where to go with it afterwards. Who do I who do I pass it on to, to then do the next stage to have these 17 people involved? So who, who was, the, who, did you have contacts out there who helped you do that? Or did it just happen quite organically with somebody knew what to do and somebody knew where this went? How did that play out? So um, we were kind of, not many people do this. So when it was kind of found out in the local villages, and we're not doing this in Colombo, we're not doing it in the centre, we are in rural Sri Lanka. Um, and once one person finds out what we're doing, it spreads like wildfire and they're all talking. 
Um, and so genuinely, the only way that I was able to do this, I wouldn't have been able to do it from a laptop sat here on the phone. I had to go out there. So I went out there, I took my son with me and we went around all of the local villages. We hired a car, drove around speaking to people. Um, I was really lucky to have the support from the previous company I worked for in Sri Lanka and they speak Sinhala. So I took a couple of the guys around with me who could translate for me. Um, and yeah, we just we just got on the ground and, and, and did the research and found out. And it took, you know, three trips there to be able to do all of the sourcing. But, you know, I was not an export. In, I wasn't an expert in import export. I had no idea what I was doing with UK customs, Sri Lankan customs. You know, we were partway through this about to send a shipment out and then realized that we needed a coconut license from the coconut board. Wow. And they only speak Sinhala. <laughs> and everything's done on paper it's not emails mm -hmm. so that was you know there's been so many hurdles that I've had to kind of overcome but the biggest thing I've learned from this actually is there's never going to be a right time you just have to go and do it you're always going to find a reason not to or yeah. a reason why you should do it next year or in six months or when you've got more money behind you or and I went no if I'm going to do it I'm going to do it now the right time is now Yes, <laughs> yeah. and we'll figure the rest out after. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well done you. A great, because yeah, because it can be very intimidating, can't it? It's like when you suddenly need, yeah, you're dealing with two governmental legislation and stuff, aren't you? But, yeah. but fair play, but then I suppose your why is you go back to, yeah, but look at those 17 families that we're helping or, you know, and, and that's why. And, and I mean, the last visit out there, we I was able, I, every time I go there, I see every single person that does stuff for it, whether it's the tuk-tuk driver, the seamstress that lives, you know, five, uh, five hours out down the back roads that we give yoga bags to, to sew up. I go and visit every single person every time I'm there. And to be able to see, I mean, it's things like they show me that they've got a front door now. Oh. they didn't have a front door before I mean these are the villages that we're going into they've got mud floors no front door no windows I mean we moan that we haven't got air conditioning in this heat <laughs> they've got this heat all the time and they don't even have you know windows or anything so mm -hmm. to be able to go there and they say look at the door this was because of you we have a door and that's just oh. and yeah being able to there's a there's a lady that we've been able to help and she, I always think about why I'm doing this and I think back to her. And she's an elderly lady who has a blind daughter and she hasn't been able to work because she's had to stay at home and look after the blind daughter. And they have been relying on food handouts from the local villages. But now this lady is able to create an income from home, still look after her daughter. And she came out and gave me the biggest hug um, and we've been able to drop off food parcels and we gave her an envelope with some money in to pay bills that she'd fallen behind on and then gave her this employment opportunity and she just couldn't be more grateful. Amazing. And that, that's why we're doing this. Yeah, that's your why. That's amazing. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Um, Hannah, can you shed some light on what's going on in Sri Lanka at the moment? Because I did see on the news that they've got some financial stuff going on, but can you put it in layman's terms? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a huge uh, unrest there. People are fed up and I don't blame them. Uh, the way that people are living out there at the moment, and this has caused huge problems for our supply, um, but, you know, the impact on people day to day, I just cannot believe. So they're having power cuts for six to eight hours every single day. Right. So they have no power. And normally the power in the country is either diesel or it's hydro and they're in dry season. So they have no backup. So they have no diesel to run generators, no hydropower. So they've got power cuts for six to eight hours a day. It used to be the case that people used to buy a house near a good school. Now they buy a house that's on the hospital grid, so they don't lose power every day. They have no fuel, so can't travel, can't you know move around, can't do anything. Their people, people are dying in the fuel queues from overheating. Oh my gosh. That's how bad it is, because they will sit there for a day and a half waiting for fuel. So these people, you know, they just have nothing and you can only keep people with nothing for so long before they start to protest. And that's what's happened. So the president has resigned and the prime minister has stepped in as temporary kind of interim president for now. They are aiming to have a new president 
you know, a long-term one within a week. And I think once they get over that hurdle, things will start to change. Things will be good. A lot of the reason why the protests are so bad is because when the anti-government protesters started, the government's response was to combat them with the pro-government protesters. So instead right. of instead of trying to neutralize the situation, they almost poured fire on it. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got two groups of protesters fighting each other, mostly around Colombo. And it's, yes, yeah, dangerous. It's scary. <laughs> I've, you know, I every day I'm praying for my team that they're safe. Yeah. So it's, yeah, they have no money. They've defaulted on loans and the people are fed up. And it's such a shame. And really what they need actually to kickstart the country is tourism. And there's a there's advice at the moment not to travel there unless it's essential. Sure. Yeah, because the media will straight away put that out, won't they, that we're not exactly. to travel, but... Exactly. Um, and really what they need is people going there and spending money. Um, mm -hmm. And it is such a beautiful place. People forget about it. But it's an hour's flight away from the Maldives. So you've got the same climate, the same white sandy beaches, but you don't have the price. No. Um, and you have the culture. I mean, the culture is just like nothing I've ever known. It's absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, it's Sri Lanka, things will get better. They're probably going to get worse before they do. Um, but to really support the country long term, tourism needs to pick up and they need to start exporting more because everything's imported there. And so that's why I hope with what we're doing, it will inspire people to do the same, not necessarily in Sri Lanka, but other developing countries and allow them to export what they have naturally available there. And, you know, customs are going the right way about it. They give you, you know, zero rates for importing from that country to try and help them because they're developing so yeah hopefully I can inspire people to to do the same thing yeah well you're certainly inspiring me, me. and even if we can't you know even if it's somebody who's listening that isn't going to set up a business or anything like that they can still support by supporting mm -hmm. businesses like yours and small businesses that export from these developing countries and yeah, absolutely and the thing yeah. is with these small businesses as well is you know, I see every single order that comes through. It comes straight on my phone and I do a little happy dance every single time. Um, you know, it really does mean the world when you buy from a small business because mm -hmm. you have, you know, a mum who's looking after, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't leave my son if it wasn't for this. The support that you guys are providing and, and people, you know, buying our stuff is, is just everything to us. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, I always say to support small because you're not helping a CEO buy their third holiday home or look at a graph with their with their sales. You're helping someone like me be able to scale up the business and help the country more, invest more into it and support my little boy. So, yeah. <laughs> and I love that. We need to be more conscious about where we put in our pounds. Conscious consumerism, isn't it? Rather than just, yeah putting more money towards Jeff Bezos's 14th yacht and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. Let's you're helping me pay for football lessons. Yeah. Yeah. And getting uh, something gorgeous and wonderful at the same time. Um, uh, I have some coconut bowls actually, but I will put my hands up. They are Cambodian. They're not Sri Lankan, but uh, they are, they're such lovely things to have because they're really tactile yeah. and that sort of natural feel of, of anything. It's just, it yeah, makes you feel like you're on holiday when you're, you know, eating out of it. But you know, what also inspired me for this um, is when my son was young, and I don't know if you're the same, I can't tell you how many plastic bowls I brought. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many plastic bowls I brought and plastic spoons and all sorts. Um, and these bowls, you know, are small bowls, it's perfect kid size. It's interesting, you know, it's reusable. And the way that we've designed our spoons, actually, for our spoons have a really wide um, kind of circle bit I don't know how you yeah. describe I don't know what it's called not the handle but the, <laughs> the spoon part <laughs> um, mm. I've actually developed it to be wide um so it's anti-choke brilliant Wonderful. yeah and it's not metal so it won't wreck their teeth so I really thought about it from a mum's point of view yeah um you know I would have loved to have had coconut bowls instead of plastic ones that are all different colours <laughs> yeah they do look lovely um going off topic just slightly how was it taking your little boy to Sri Lanka traveling with a little one is just yeah, share, you know, share how that was the best advice I can give 
is get a trunkie, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but don't let them ride it around duty free because they crush into stuff. <laughs> the scratch art I don't know if you've ever seen this but like sitting on a plane you don't want them to have a pencil case of 80 pencils and they drop it and they roll down the floor and you're sorry excuse me I just need to (laughs) crawling under seats so I bought a book of scratch art so it's got all the color behind a layer of almost like you know scratch cards yeah the layer so it's got built-in wooden pencil and the sheets are already pre-made in a book and the pencil's attached so it can't get dropped and they can scratch off whatever drawing they want so you haven't got to worry about, you know, sharpening pencils, felt tips drying out, losing them. It's all in one place. And screen time. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 11 hour flights with a four year old <laughs> are hard enough. <laughs> and it's frowned upon to give them sleeping tablets. No judgments. No judgment here. <laughs> so, honestly, I think he just couldn't believe his luck that he got 11 hours screen time. He did not talk to me the entire flight. <laughs> so that's the best advice that I can give to anyone thinking of doing long haul with a with a small child. Mm-hmm. Oh, and inflatable footrests. Game ah. That in economy, you can blow them up and they fit in the footwell to make it flat like a bed. Amazing. God, they're approved really by all, yeah, they're approved by all airlines. Um, and you blow them up with your mouth. And then deflate them at the end and they fold up into something about that big that you can put in your hand luggage. Incredible. Great. Great idea. That's great. (laughs) And when you were in Sri Lanka, um, how they interact with people, like how children interact and accept different cultures in a way that's so different to adults. There's no barrier. Is there? Absolutely. I mean, my son's best friend when we were there was a guy who was kind of like the lifeguard and his name was Fernando. And they ended up playing football for hours. Oh, yeah. Give the give boys a ball and they're yeah, they're, exactly. They're happy. But yeah. I don't know who was enjoying it more. I think Fernando was. <laughs> <laughs> but they absolutely love children out there. They really do. But do you know what struck me is um just how rural some of the parts are because they don't have tv tourists don't travel there so with me and my son walking down the street it was the first time they'd ever seen a white person wow and blonde as well blonde Blonde as well and my son's blonde as well Mm. so I mean people are just I I, we went into a local shop and they asked if they could take our photo in their shop (laughs) and I was like of course (laughs) <laughs> so what do you want me to do I'm like you know like doing a sofa ad <laughs> so shy so shy Hannah <laughs> no, but I was like go for it I don't care that I've got no big well go for it <laughs> oh I love it <laughs> so no it's just yeah it's a really magical place and they will do anything that they can to help you honestly if you broke down in the street there'd be about 40 people pushing your car up the road for you love it um love it. Yeah. I, lo- I love the whole ethos of, of, of why you've started it and how you're maintaining it and all of those that you're supporting along the way. It's really lovely. And they're really niche, gorgeous little gifts. I mean, the yoga bags as well. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to be getting one because they're just beautiful. It's lovely. It's such a lovely little business. Um, what advice have you got, though, for any woman who's thinking about not necessarily starting a business, but just maybe changing the trajectory of her life or know something needs to change but not sure what it is what what can can you share okay the first thing for me would be and like I said before there's never a right time and you're always going to find excuses and I don't want to look back when I'm 80 and go I wish I'd done it because it's too late now so that was a big thing for me involve your friends and family even if they don't no one in my family is an entrepreneur nobody started a business they couldn't give me really business advice but they could be there for me and that's so important just because your friends and family don't necessarily are not experts on what you're trying to do involve them because they might know someone who knows something or can talk to someone or you know they're just there to be like yeah I know what you're trying to do at the moment and come here have a hug (laughs) Um, and that's that's really important Mm -hmm. and sharing your dream I think it makes you work harder when people know you're trying to do something I would definitely say and don't ever feel like you're I always say second class to the Royal Mail. I've always had this kind of saying that for me, especially being a young single mom, I always felt like I was almost kind of 
people underestimated my ability and thought that I should follow a certain path just because I was a young single mum. And what I've learned actually is sometimes people underestimating you is a good thing. <laughs> it can work out really well. You know, your dreams are never too big. It doesn't matter what kind of start you've had. It doesn't matter your background. Your dreams are never too big. If you want to go and set up the next Amazon, go and do it. And you know what? Starting a big company and starting a small company, it's the same amount of work. <laughs> Love it. It's true. Abraham Hicks says you can manifest a castle as easily as a button. Very, very true. Love that. That is great advice. Where can people get hold of you? Where can people buy these amazing things and support Sri Lanka and support you? So they can head over to our website. It's www.tobygifts.com. We are also on Etsy so they can get us there. And yeah, we've got our own e-com site, so you can order through our website. Um, it's all secure. We do next day delivery. We actually have a 50% off sale on at the moment. Ooh. So yeah, <laughs> it's our summer sale. So if anyone wants to go on there and grab themselves some lovely bits and support a great cause and, you know, look after the environment, do their little bit, that would be amazing. Yeah, and I really hope that with these items, what I've tried to do is make sure that every time you use it, you're reminding yourself that you're part of the solution. And that, for me, is really important. It's not just that you buy a yoga bag and that's your part done. It's helping us continuously. That's Um, really powerful. I love that. Every time you use it, you're part of the solution. That's. I will be putting all of the links in the show notes go to those and click those and you're you're an inspiration you really are I love the work that you're doing I love how passionate you are about what you're doing and I'm going to have a look at Sri Lanka immediately I get off this <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much oh, for joining you. us here and thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and I wish you all the best with your amazing tovigifts.com that's T O V I g-i-f-t-s dot com and uh, we'll see you all next week thank you so much for joining us today thank you really appreciate it, it means the world and thanks everyone for listening thanks. bye <laughs> thank you so much for listening and i hope you enjoyed it please leave a review and share as that is how we spread the magic and it will certainly raise my vibration including yours keep in touch via all the social handles which are in the show notes and